All right, welcome back to the beautiful Pacific Northwest in the land of plaid and coffee. This is David, and real quick, I wanted to give a shout out to a really cool little company called Through Night. Through Night, it's a T R T H R U N I T E. They have this flashlight for you Bigfoot researchers out there for your little headlamps. Absolutely awesome, absolutely affordable, really, really cool. Um, and as a matter of fact, I'm going to try to get out here and do a review of one here pretty soon. And uh, actually do a video of it so you guys can see exactly how well it works so I be ready and be prepared for that real quick <clears throat> we're going to dive into this week's encounter story this one actually is kind of a a cool little one I really enjoyed this one when I first saw it um, come into my inbox um, I have to tell you I <laughs> it was just it was just fun it was interesting and as a matter of fact um, I have to say that uh, this person name shares the name of a good best friend of mine that I grew up with so that's also what stood out so there you go anyways first and foremost real quick also I want to say uh, thank you guys so very much for sticking with the old pack West Bigfoot here and uh, all the cool encounter stories um, and uh, there is uh, one other little piece of news real quick. There is a uh, group of, um, you would say, a pretty popular pretty popular platform on television. They're looking at uh, starting a documentary, and I think they're about to start this next week. And they were asking me if I could ask you if you'd like to sit down and have a little fireside chat about your visual encounter or encounter with Bigfoot. Um, so if you are interested, please email me at packwestbigfoot at gmail.com, packwestbigfoot at gmail.com, and I will get you connected with them ASAP. Okay. With that, by the way, um, real quick, I did have a really bad cold, <laughs> so I should be okay though. So we're going to take a sip of water. Mm. <sighs> no coffee today, just water. Here we go. Let's get started. The Screaming Bigfoot of Fort Goff, California. Screaming. <clears throat> it all started up on the mountain, but soon enough, it was right outside my camper. Well, camper slash truck. No joke, Dave. The scream of a Bigfoot is the most blood-curdling thing you'll ever hear and feel, especially when it's literally as close as it was to me that night. Here's what led up to my run-in with a screaming Bigfoot of Fort Goff, California. Fort Goff Campground. The campground is right off the main highway, if you were to look on a map. There is no long winding road in. Just pull off and pack into, back into whatever spot is, a bit, is available. This is exactly what I wanted to do that late summer weekend. Well, my weekend, that is. At the time, I worked at a lumber mill, one of the very few remaining in my town back then. I had Mondays and Tuesdays off, and it just so happened I had a couple extra days, vacation time to be exact, coming, that I wanted to use up and get some fly fishing in along the Klamath River. Growing up in Northern California, my dad taught me how to fly fish, and every time I could, that is where I would be when not working. But this trip was about a hundred miles from where I lived, so it would be my summer trip, if you will. At the time, I was nearly 27 years old, single, and the only cares in the world were work, rent, and my new truck payment. I'd been to Fort Goff on several occasions growing up. The little spot was a favorite of my dad's for a short weekend jaunt with him, my mom, and me. I was an only child, by the way, so camping in the back of a truck was par for the course with us. We had a tent, but here, well, we just slept in the back bed of the truck. And that is how I camped, myself. Only I had a camper shell on mine, not a fancy one that were coming out back then and becoming real popular, just a shell with some windows on all four sides. <laughs> so the, plan, uh, the plan was for four full days of fishing, camping, and if I felt up to it, maybe a hike or two down or up river to seek out some other great fishing spots. However, I never thought I would only last two nights there before I was run off by a Bigfoot. And yes, I got a quick look at this thing too. Well, some of it at least. The screaming. I got up at uh, there rather early, 
made it to the campground around 11 a.m. I like to wake up early and get started in general in life. And vacation is fishing time. Well, all the better reason for it. I reached my destination, unpacked a few things, and chose a spot right up against the river itself, practically. It was quiet there, too. <clears throat> Other than a passing car, here and there, and there was nobody around. It was just me. Or so I thought. There was a house just up around the bend at the time, but passing by, I saw no vehicles, I remember. I settled in, collected some wood for a fire later, and got myself ready for some fishing. The day went by slowly, and I loved it. I stopped for a bit, had some lunch, and just stared out into the mountains and hills beyond the river that ran up and down it. The Pacific Northwest really is the most beautiful place on Earth. At least it is to me. Even if it is large enough to keep a monster of a creature like Bigfoot hidden from the world for so long. I grew up hearing the tales and reports of Bigfoot, like I said. I worked in a mill at the time. Once I'd actually overheard a trucker who would haul timber from up around the Shasta Lake area tell a tale of seeing one. The story goes that he was up hauling timber with a few, other from his, a few others from his company hired to take them to the mill I worked at. This, he said, happened not a year earlier. He said it was close to sundown or dusk when he headed off the mountain with a full load when he saw it, this creature of sorts. Coming around a bend, there was a small open area where runoff of melted snow ran down into a small creek below. At first, he thought it was a boulder or stump sticking out next to the running water. But suddenly, it moved. He said it stood up on two legs, turned and looked at him, and then took two giant steps over and past the stream and into the tree line. He swore up and down it was Bigfoot. He mentioned, well, what I could overhear him say was that it looked like a monkey in the face. Its hair was long, ratty looking, and it was solid black in color. He also mentioned this thing, this thing's head would have come up past the hood of his truck by a foot or two. We all know how far up off the ground a semi-truck truck hood can be. That would have put this thing around seven to eight feet tall, at least in my mind. The old guy seemed pretty serious about the whole thing, and seemed a bit, well, rattled too. Even though it happened almost a year earlier, he seemed a bit fearful of what he saw. He did not stop. He only came to a slow crawl with the truck along enough to make out a face. But that thing, he said, moved like the wind back into the trees. Personally, I was, and up till my own encounter, considered myself a skeptic. I was not going to say it existed, but I was not going to say it didn't either. My dad and I had never experienced anything like that, nor did my dad give in to telling tales. He was a pretty straightforward and no bullcrap kind of man. But I heard the screaming. I saw the creature. About last night. The first evening, the sunset was spectacular. I remember how beautiful and peaceful it was, like it was yesterday. I did get myself a trout, cooked it up, heated up a can of sweet peas and some carrot sticks to go with it. Next to the fire, after eating, I sat reading an old book about fly fishing. I can't remember who wrote it, but it was a great read. Nothing much has changed over the years in my fly fishing practice, other than learning how to tie my own flies. But all was quiet, like I said. And I think uh, before dinner, in bed, I had only heard and seen two trucks drive by, maybe three. The peacefulness would end, however, and it would make for some pretty interesting weirdness, if you will. I added a couple of logs to the fire and crawled into the back of the truck, leaving the tailgate and camper windows up. Personally, I still like it like that today. I ex uh, basically exposed, I guess you'd say, to the night. Even after this experience, as scary as it was, I let the fear go. But still, I laid down, said goodnight to the world and the good Lord above, and fell asleep. It was after midnight, I recall, when it started, the screaming and wailing from some kind of animal. It was so eerie and crazy sounding that it woke me out of a dead sleep. At first I thought it was dreaming, so much so I actually had to force myself to sit up for a second after opening my eyes the second time. But I did and realized I was hearing something really, really strange off in the distance. While the area was kind of cavernous in a way, as many areas where rivers cut through the mountains are, 
I could not tell exactly what direction it was coming from. But, at the time, my best guess was across the river, directly across and up the mountainside, in fact. It was something between howling and wailing, I guess you'd call it. I could never make the sound it did, but as each howl or wail would tra uh, trailed off, I could sense a certain tonality to it that seemed, well, human-like, if you will. That is what made it so strong, or so strange-sounding. It would come floating down into the ravine across the river and with a bone-chilling effect. I have to say, after the third time, I was fully awake and goosebumps started popping up everywhere. I was not sure if it was coming closer or just getting louder, but as it did, one or the other, it kept up for about 20 minutes. I looked at my clock and it was 10 minutes to 1 a.m. by the time it stopped, I remembered. I would have to say I recall correctly, but if I recall correctly, but that thing hollered about 10 or so times. It would grow from a low rumble to a horrible high-pitched wail or even maybe a, a scream, I suppose. <clears throat> Either way, I decided the rest of the night I would keep the tailgate and windows to the camper shell closed and locked. Morning comes and goes. The next morning was just slow going, peaceful and almost zero traffic as the day before. The only incident was the howling and wailing the night before. The fishing was great, and by noon I'd caught uh, all but two for my daily limit. I stopped so that I could save the others for the evening. So instead of fishing after lunch, I opted for a long walk and a nap afterward. During the walk, I headed up river. I have to say I did feel a bit uneasy when I had come to a particular section of it. I was probably about three quarters of a mile when up when I started getting the sense that something or someone was around. I have felt that feeling before out in the woods, and it either turned out to be a hiker passing by or an animal of some kind checking me out. I stopped and looked around a bit for, a, for, uh, for any movement, but nothing was seen or heard. The woods in the area were rather thick once you got up river, up the river bank about 30 or so feet on both sides. With the sun up and it being mostly sunny, well, there was too much backlight to see far into the forest. It felt like something was there, though, across the river and in the woods, just staring and checking me out. I thought it was probably just a cougar, as, they were a pr as there was a pretty high population of them at the time. So I continued my walk, and about a hundred or so yards up the river again, the feeling went away. I knew after that fact it was probably that Bigfoot thing. I just know it. It was about five or so when I returned to my campsite. I washed up a bit in the river, basically taking a swim with some Irish spring in hand. I then made a bit of dinner an early one, so that I could spend more time fishing that early evening or late afternoon, actually. It was about 6.30 when someone pulled into the campground. It was a fishing game. He was just heading up river to a few popular fishing sites and saw my truck. He checked my license and looked at my fish. He was actually a, in a bit of awe of how well I had done with the fly fishing, so I gave him a real quick lesson before he headed off. Again, 20 minutes or so later, I was alone. No, not the new camper shell. Night came and so did something in a, I never in a million years thought I'd see or experience. A real life Bigfoot. That is what I saw. That is what dented my new camper shell. As I said, night came and so did the chirping of crickets, the hooting of an owl, and the weird sound of, sound of some bird out across the river that today, well, I think it was the Bigfoot making sounds after all the research I've read up on since, Dave. But I headed off to bed. And this time, because of the incident earlier that day on the river and the night before, I shut everything up but cracked the side little windows on the camper shell. I was asleep for at least a good hour or so before I heard something. It was like a low grunt almost, and it made the sound at least three times. <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> And while that woke me from my sleep, it was the next thing that happened that had me grabbing my chest thinking I was having a massive heart attack. Heavy steps made their way from across the dirt driveway, from the edge of the tree line behind the truck. The first was so low, it, low that it, it took me a moment to adjust my eyes to the dark, but I did, and what came up on the side of the truck was massive. A shadow of a thing appeared next to me, towering over the camper by several feet or so. 
I would say this this thing that the Bigfoot had to be all of nine feet tall. I tried to lay still and to be as quiet as a church mouse, but my heart was beating so fast I thought it was making the truck rumble. Suddenly I felt the truck move a bit as this thing took one of its massive arms and nudged the truck hard enough to make it move ever so slightly, and it dented it as well. Talk about wanting to scream. Yeah, I usually come armed, but my handgun was in the cab of the truck, and there was no way I was going to make a run for it, not even, not even close. After that thought fleeted through my mind again, that Bigfoot nudged the car, this time letting out a grunt. <clears throat> Seconds later, it backed off a bit between me and the river, at least a good 10 to 15 feet away. Then, it started swaying back and forth, still facing the cab of the truck I was in. <laughs> the aluminum between me and it, I have to say, did not make me feel safe at all. From the distance it stood from me, I could now see some of its waist and upper thighs, somewhat at least from the bit of flickering campfire light that was still that still burned just one of those legs seemed to be as wide as me and the arms i could see too as they dangled there and ending way past the knees my heart now was racing even harder so hard in fact i remember it hurting a bit it still swayed back and forth back and forth and continued for about a minute or so until it made a sound i was actually familiar with that scream from the night before. I was in a tin can that vibrated so badly from that long old scream that I thought my insides were going to rupture. It was that loud. It came right at me, the scream, not the Bigfoot itself, just the scream. Some say it's like that of a lion, but louder. I hate to disagree. This scream and wailing are completely different other than the fact that it is really, really loud. I did not look at the thing any longer by that point. I was scared out of my mind and my heart and even my body were starting to ache horribly. Then, seconds later, it stopped. I huddled there in a ball of fear, heart racing out of my chest. After another minute, maybe, I heard it walk off in the same direction it had come earlier. The river. I was scared to death. That was a fact. Today I'm feeling much better and even now head out and camp with the family and do some fishing in the woods of Northern California. But we do not go to Fort Golf, ever. Well, I did take my wife there once to show her the spot, and while she thought I was crazy at first, by the time I finished telling her my story, well, she could tell I was not giving her some, some crazy story after all. Today, she is a believer herself. If I were you, and did some Bigfoot research, which I don't. I'd for sure be heading up and around the Fort Golf area. It's a bit out of the way, quiet, and apparently full of Bigfoot. Not me, though. I've, had, I've seen enough and heard enough. But that's my story. Thanks. Cameron.